oh my gosh hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel so today's little story time is about my relationship with god and how i came to know the lord and the journey that i've been on with god i'm gonna try and make this short oh my goodness i'm gonna try my ultimate best really i don't <laughs> i don't know if it's gonna work okay so um essentially i grew up methodist for the first 18 years of my life i grew up methodist i yeah it's on dolama silly guys you know that is like how i grew up in the east of johannesburg my grandmother went to that church my mother went to that church not so much the men in the family um they were never ever church goers i don't even know whether like my grandfather and my father okay my father was not saved but i don't even know whether my grandfather was saved even though he did go to church at times yeah but anyway it's really just the matriarchs of the family that really loved church um and we were religious with it going to church every single sunday it was a thing in my household my mother was and still is in the choir type of thing like yeah it's 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 there so essentially what then happened is that i went to school um after matric um i went to a college in bromfontein and i was staying in bromfontein at the time so there was like different residences those residences were owned by south point um whoever like has stayed in bromfontein knows who south point is essentially um, they own a lot of the student accommodation buildings um, in Bramfontein. So I stayed in one of them and it was basically like it was a co-ed res. And it basically had like a floor for the ladies, floor for the men, floor for the ladies, floor for the men. So that's how it worked. It had like two bathrooms on each floor and a kitchen, a communal kitchen for everyone. Um, and in your room, it was like a bachelor setup. You you put like your food in one place. You could have a TV. You had a bed. You had a study desk. So that was like the general setup of the actual race itself. So I was there in my first year, right? This is 2006. I, I matriculated 05. So um, I had this neighbor. <laughs> Shout out to you, patients, if you do get to ever see this video. Because she is on my Facebook. So yeah, I do put up my channel on my Facebook. Um, so if she ever does see this, shout out to you, patients. Um, patients was my neighbor, literally next door neighbor. And essentially how I met her was that every single morning, I don't know whether she remembers this, every single morning, Patience would play Kirk Franklin. Every morning. Let me hear you make some Holy Ghost crazy noise. Hosanna played, like, literally every single morning. I don't know whether it's because the album had just come out. I don't know. Maybe maybe that's when it came out. I don't know when the Rebirth of Kirk, Kirk Franklin album came out. But she would listen to it every single morning. And then, so, I literally knocked on her door this one day. And she was, you could tell, the, the, the walls were like paper thin, guys. Paper thin. And you could tell that she was, like, dancing. Because, like, you could hear her, her movements in her room. And I knocked on her door this one time. And I wasn't irritated or anything like that. But I knocked on her door. And I was just like... <laughs> I was like, hi. And the thing is, when she opened the door, that smile, I will never forget like how gorgeous her smile is. And like, she just smiled at me because she was so happy to see me. It was just so strange. And it was the first time she saw me. And she was just like, hi. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she's so cute. Like, I can't deal. And I'm like, what are you listening to? It's just like, I'm listening to Kirk Franklin. It's a Christian album. But she, I think she spoke a little bit about Jesus, but not really like speaking about Jesus. Then I started to speak, speak to her about what is she studying? I think she studied drama. Like something along the lines of acting or directing. Like, yeah, she studied. Yeah. Anyway, I, I'm not actually really quite sure. I don't remember quite well. What she was studying but yeah she was telling me about what she's studying at vids and all of that stuff so that's how i got to know her and even like as the days and the weeks went by like she would come um to my door and every time she came back from school she would knock on my door and i'd be like hey and i knew it was her <laughs> like oh she'd be walking towards her door and she'd just be like lou and i'd be like hey <laughs> it was so great i love it 
<laughs> I love it so much. So essentially, she then started inviting me to church, and she went to this church. I don't know whether it was her or whether it was Dumisang. So Dumisang was another girl that lived literally across sort of the hallway. And um, yeah, she also stayed on the same floor and she also went to Vits and she was studying architecture and she also went to Let's Go to Glory, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, the church was called Let's Go to Glory. It was on the West Campus of Vits. I was invited to this church. And so essentially, remember, I met patients beginning of the year and we basically built this whole friendship together, right? So I got saved at the church at Let's Go to Glory on the 13th of August, right? Which is a very special day because it's also like one of my friend's birthdays. But it's literally my birthday in terms of like being born again, right? So yeah, it has a lot of significance for me. Um, So... <laughs> So I got saved and my life literally drastically changed, guys. Like now I was at church all the time. I was at church Sunday to Friday. I don't think I was at church on Saturday, but literally from Sunday when church happened to Monday being like a Bible study of some sort, a Wednesday being a home sir, a Tuesday being some sort of a worship night, there was I was at church constantly. I had that new born again zeal that you have. <laughs> it it was wild and crazy. And I had that until the end of the year. And then what then happened is that in 2007, when I was supposed to do my second year, my mother couldn't pay for varsity anymore. And yeah, she couldn't afford it because she had just been through her divorce, etc., etc. So finances were really not great at the time. I think she was even trying to find her feet because she was like unemployed for like a full year and trying to actually find a job. And it was just hard at the time, um, financially at home. So what then happened is that I moved back home. And I was a baby Christian, guys. So I backslid like no one's business because I did not have the community that I had had when I was staying in Bramfontein. And it was just so problematic for me. It was hard. It was even hard for me to like keep in touch with my friends. Um, so I was commuting literally every single day by taxi, going to school, coming back, walking, guys, walking from Parktown to Wanderers, Parktown to North. Like, I, that was my life. And... um. I backslid, and when I say I backslid, I backslid for years, for years, for years. Um, I would still go back to like the Methodist church, but it was never the same for me. I did not feel like, I, I didn't feel like Jesus was there. Like, because I did not know Christ, even having gone to church for 18 years, um, I did not know Jesus personally as my Lord and Savior until I left home and actually experienced him at Let's Go to Glory. It was a different worship setup. They spoke about salvation. They did the altar calls. People were, the Holy Spirit was in power, you know, like the, people were praying in tongues. People were getting healed. People, you saw a lot of like very big differences compared to being in a, a different denominational church, right? And I went to a Catholic school in high school. So I went to mass. I saw the Anglican church, the Roman Catholic church, like, it was very different to being in a Christian church. So I literally fell back. I fell back so hard. And it was, and when I say I fell back hard, it felt like God disappeared. Like it was weird. It was like he was in my life and it felt like he was not there no more. And that's how it felt like. And then I went back to who I was before. And it was just so strange because as I said, my life had changed drastically when I got saved. Anyway, so then I moved out of home at 21, I moved to Midrand, even when I got to Midrand, right? So now I'm away from home and I'm away from the Methodist church. But I, I still sort of struggled to find my feet, you know, in, in, in a spiritual sense. Um, and then in about 2013, that's when I was like, oh, I want to find a church. Like, I feel like that's when God then pursued me again. Like he, yeah, he, then he was like serious, <laughs> seriously pursuing me. Maybe he was before, but I probably was not hearing him. But in 2013, I, I started to feel it inside that I really, really want to um, find myself a church. And I found a church and um, I liked the church. It was also a very different kind of um, setup because I went from like a, you know, where the worship is sort of like a joyous celebration kind of thing. And that's what it was at like Vitz. And then it changes and it becomes like a Hillsong Bethel kind of thing. And then this was like, okay, this is new, but I like it. I still like it. 
so i went to the church for a good couple of months like a good six more than six months right so in the beginning of 2014 then i went to church and there was a girl that i sat next to at church at that time and her name was palisa and the reason why i know her name is because like i introduced myself because church hadn't started but she was sitting next to me so we were, i introduced myself and we started talking and then um church then happened and then when it was time to leave i had bought a car by then because i bought a car at 23 yeah i was already 23 then because i think i was 23 in 2011 so i then this is 2014 now remember so um i told her look let me drive you home so i asked for a complex name um and then i drove her home and then she told me while we were driving back that um oh she she got like this mailer of a conference you know at this church and um she'd like to like find out if i want to go and i'm like oh okay cool um just send it to me so the next day being monday she sent me the thing and the conference banner was the voice to the nation's conference at rama um and yeah so i was just like okay um, and it was a thursday evening and i was like no let's it's cool let's go so we go um and guys i had an encounter with the lord <laughs> i had rima bible church <laughs> i had an encounter with god i just knew that that place is my home like and the crazy part is that at the church in midrand where i was i was literally about to sign up to start serving because i was just like i've been here for a few months i like the church i like being here and i want to get involved and i want to like serve in the church right and literally god was just like uh left turn please <laughs> so that's exactly what happened i went to rama and um on that one night at conference and it was february and literally god i even rededicated my life on that day in 2014 so oh it was just just something else it was really really amazing um and then i went back home and i was like wait a minute lord this church really feels like it's like where i need to be but it's far and i don't have the petrol money every single week to be driving to church like no mind you what's happening parallel to that is that um i was looking for a job because i had started a job literally like six months prior um and i hated that job from the beginning it was like a really bad career move i had wanted to leave from literally the first month and so i was like job hunting like that job was really not great for me in terms of my mental health but my spirit man was doing something during that time because it was the time where i prayed the most <laughs> i was in devotionals i was reading the word i was angry when i was reading the word it was just a very hectic time of havoc and also at the same time i lost like 14 kilograms i was not a happy girl at that time guys it was just not great so there's that happening and then there's that encounter that i have with god in february little did i know that the very next month march i started having interviews right for a job and i think i had like two interviews and then they offered me and that was like towards the middle of march when they offered me the job and i literally like accepted the role and the role was in Bryanston. remember i live in midrand the role is in Bryanston. So in my mind, I'm like, yo, now I'm going to be traveling from Midran to Bryanston. So then I asked my, I told my landlord that I would like to move out at the end of the month. It could be end of March, could be end of April. Yeah, I'd like to move out. And he was like, okay with it, it's fine. Um, so literally, I chose Randburg because Randburg and Bryanston are close to each other. So that's exactly how I came to have a new job, a new place, and a new church all in one month. So... <laughs> and for me that was a god move that was a, a serious god move he literally transitioned my entire life i left everything behind of the past and i literally just moved forward into something new and everything was new new place getting to know like new people at church like finding new friends like it was just a lot was like happening all at once right so then i got to rema and yeah i'm not gonna lie my rema journey it's been like how many years almost eight now or eight years just over eight years that i've been at rima bible church um, with the exception of the two years of covid because during covid um i wasn't really engaged in um the church i was only engaged in international church which i still am um but i've gone through a lot of highs and lows being at rima 
I've wanted to leave like two or three times. And every time I try to leave, God always brings me back. And I've now learned to listen to God. You know, when God is just like, stay put. Like back then, because I was trying to leave because of just circumstances, right? That had happened to me. And I was just spiritually in a lot of turmoil, right? And I was not listening like to God because I was just so like sad. Like I was just, yo, yeah. Um, yeah, like being at Rema has done so much for my spiritual growth, but it's also, yo, there's been situations, man, that have happened and ooh, I'm trying so hard not to be emotional, but it's, it's a bit hard. Um, yeah, I, I've gone through hell. Like, <laughs> wow, <laughs> yo, I've gone through hell and it's been hard even holding on to God being, um, at, at Rema because at the beginning it's so shiny and it's so new and it's so beautiful, your journey with God. And then you just go through things and then you just like, oh, like, and it's not even any bash on the church at all. There's nothing wrong with the church at all. Please go to the church. <laughs> go. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with Rema Bible church. It's just the experiences that I've had, um, while I've been there. And that's been very, very hard for me. And a lot of that has been trying to like get me out of that church. Like that, that has been my posture. Just like get me out. I just don't want to be there anymore. And um, thankfully, look, during the pandemic, right, my relationship with God grew the most because not only was I hosting a Bible study, I was in a prayer group. Um, there was a lot happening spiritually. Like I was involved with the Lord. I was, I was holding on to God like as much as I could, even with what I had been through, because I know for a fact for me that God is my only constant. He's the only one that can solve problems. He's the only one that can literally give breakthrough. He's the only one that can make my life align in the way that it's supposed to as he has planned it for my life. So I'm not a person that dabbles in other spiritualities. I really believe in the, believe in the spiritual world. And I believe in the spiritual world, like, yeah, like there's demonic spirits, then there's pure spirit, the Holy Spirit, <laughs> the only Holy Spirit. <laughs> The spirit of God is the only spirit that's there that's holy, in my opinion, you know, because there's just other things that you'll dabble in, but you don't realize that you're dabbling in the, the spiritual world of darkness, essentially. So because the, there's literally God who's in the light and the word of God says is that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. Um, so I think that is important for people to know, like God is light. He is light. In him there's no darkness at all. And I do believe that these spirits that are in the darkness that we may follow. So I don't follow anything else, guys. I don't, it's it's not anywhere near my spirituality. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life for me. No one can come to the Father except through him anyway. So for me, that is who I pray to. That is the only thing I pray to. Um, and it's the only thing I believe. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So yeah, um, that's how I actually came to know christ and even though i had backslidden literally for years god literally pursued me and god has been with me and god has literally heard my prayers god has answered so many prayers god is the one that keeps leading every single path like every single like when the bible said says that he is literally the light the light unto your path he's literally that like he guides me in everything that I need to do, he leads me in every in every way that I need to go. Um, that that for me is a truth. It is a truth because I don't know how to live this life. No one asks to be here. Someone had sex for you to be here. Like no one asks and says, "Oh, please bring me to Earth." No, it's literally the Lord who purposes for you to be here. So who else is gonna know how you're supposed to live this life? Who else is gonna know what exactly you're here for? It's only him. It's literally only him. And that's why I don't dabble in other spiritualities because I don't think there's a spirit that is wiser than God. I don't think there's an ancestor, a person who was a human being living here on earth and now all of a sudden knows everything about your life and your future. I don't think that's possible. So for me, there's no other spirituality that I believe in. I will not idolize anything else. 
I will not. I will not idolize anything else. So, um, yeah, that that is my God testimony. And he continues to be just my everything. My everything. And he and the thing is, people, you know, I've even met men, like, um, who, when I start to, like, in the talking stages or whatever, um, and you just start to ask them about, like, their spirituality. And then they're like, oh, so you're religious. I'm like, what does that mean? I never know what that means, you know, or, like I never know what that means because for me, religion is something that I just do. It's not who I am, right? Like it's like religion, work, this relationships, that it's like there's a category for your life. But for me, my faith is intertwined in everything. So God is in my work. God is in my friendships. God is in a relationship. God is in everything like it's in my home it, in everything that i do god is there so if i'm working for example and this is like a random example but if i'm working right and i'm finding it difficult to do a certain task or i find myself starting to like procrastinate about something like god is involved in that like when i say involved i mean i literally speak to him right there so he's with me like throughout the whole day and when i say with me not just like as a presence only but as a i'm talking to you like god can you help me with this like lord i'm supposed to finish a task at four o'clock today what do you what do i need to do do i do that first or i do this first that's how involved god is in my life he's involved like god what can i cook today i don't feel like this should i order from uber eats guys i'm telling you that's how involved god is <laughs> in my entire life he is completely intertwined right he, he's he's there constantly for me so i'm conscious of him i'm conscious of him in the sense that he's in the room he's in the room right now so if we're going through something and we, we're or we're nervous about a certain meeting that we're about to have i literally sit there and i'm like lord i'm about to have this call with this person and i'm intimidated or i feel this way or i'm not so confident about this presentation Father, please give me the confidence to walk in it. So I don't just call on God when I'm about to have a job interview. I don't call on God when I'm going through a difficult time emotionally. I don't just call on God. He's just there in the good and the bad, in the everything, in the everyday of life, right? And I would really like that to be the case, even if my life were to be filled with many things, like work and schoolwork and whatever and whatever. I would like God to be in everything, even if I get married, I would like God to be in my marriage and in the everyday of my marriage. Like I'd like God to be in my parenting, like in every single stage. He is literally that intertwined with me because I need him. I don't know how to do life without God. Like I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I might die. Like I honestly, like I just, I might die. And yes, I mentioned earlier that I backslid for seven years. I don't know how I survived those seven years. Like what the hell was I doing? What in the world was I, do what was I doing without Jesus? I don't know what I was doing. So yeah, I really just wanted to talk about that because oh, daddy is just so special to me. Like I'm so grateful that there is a God because life is hard. Life is hard and you know, we've been brought here. And you, you know, when you read the Bible, you're trying to get understanding. That book was brought here so that we can have an understanding. Can you imagine if we were here and there was no Bible? I don't know what we would do. <laughs> because you need answers. You need to understand, like, how do I shift? How do I move and have my being? And that, that literally mentions it in the Bible, that in him we live, we move and have our being. How do I do that, Lord? How do I navigate on this earth? How do I do that? And it's only the word that is able to give you a clue as to literally like how you navigate yourself on this earth. Sometimes it needs to be unpacked in the word. And sometimes the word says it really clearly in terms of what you need to do. So, yeah, like I live my life through Christ, in Christ. I'm his image and his likeness. Like, and I'm I'm completely finished for that, man. Oh, my God, Jesus. Yo, 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 yo. Like, I'm completely finished for him, guys. You know, I, I was listening to the Perry's podcast, Jackie Hill Perry and Preston Perry. And I was listening to their a podcast on what when friends leave the faith. And there was a part there where Jackie Hill Perry was speaking about the parable of the sower. And she was basically saying, you know, when the 
seeds are basically um thrown on like the path on the thorny ground and all of that stuff that used to be me in the past where the word was not necessarily rooted in me but now i feel like okay god's word literally has fallen on fertile soil now it's like on fertile soil because i cannot live without him and when it's still like on thorny ground even when you go through like difficult times the cares of the world are gonna choke it up like they're going to it, you're not going to stay rooted in the lord but you you grow into that it takes years to grow into a solid 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 relationship with jesus because life will throw so many things at you that you'll think jesus does not care about you but i have learned that that is a love that will never ever 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 be replaced like it's a love I will never understand it, but yeah, I just wanted to share j just why I love the Lord so much. Like, I, uh, because th there's nothing else for me. There's nothing else. Even if, like, I kept saying to people, oh, I've prayed and I've prayed and I've fasted. And if somebody came to me and said, why don't you try this? And it's got nothing to do with Jesus. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it because there's no answers there. The answers are in the one who created me. He must answer. He must answer. <laughs> so God is not a, a just a giver of really great gifts. God is an everything kind of God. Like you just need to involve him in everything like that you're going through. Involve him even if you're struggling with sin. Involve him even if you're struggling with grief, with loss. Involve him even in the good times when you're being blessed. Involve him in your work. Involve him in in whatever sort of flaws you have you know involve him like he refines you and he makes you exactly who you need to be so yeah i hope somebody was just inspired and i pray that if you do not know the lord that you will know him intimately like deeply and intimately because he is the bridegroom and you are the bride when you're in with jesus you are in a marriage ah there's no way out <laughs> So death was part mama but then again with jesus there's no death you know we've got eternity still on the other side with him which for me makes life even better knowing that i'm going to make heaven <laughs> and i'm going to see my daddy face to face that is an even more exciting part about my life that is the most exciting part is that after all of this like i get to see him and i'm very excited about that so yeah I hope you're inspired and I hope you find the Lord and I hope you enjoy him when you do have him. Please subscribe, like, comment, share your Jesus testimonies, share even why maybe you don't believe in Jesus or why you, you know, believe in Jesus and other things as well. I'm very interested to hear about all of that stuff. So yeah, I'll see you in my next video, guys. Take care.